All right, so we're printing, but things aren't perfect. Let's talk about why and how to uh, fix it yourself. Hey everybody, welcome back to Make It and Break It. My name's Andrew. Behind me is our Creality CR10 uh, 3D printer. It's our brand new, uh, relatively inexpensive 3D printer that we're going through uh, setup for because we don't want to print PLA on our nice printer on the inside there. You can see right now that behind me, this thing is actually printing something for our 3D printing station. There's a video coming out soon, hopefully on that. But uh, it's not coming out perfect. And there's a couple good reasons for that. One, you can see that this thing has a, a really large amount of stringing involved. Uh, and that's kind of an obvious term because it's literally where plastic strings between two parts when the print head traverses. You can see we're still struggling a little bit with bed adhesion. This happens to be because of the orientation of this print. Um, if I were printing this in the flat position, I would not have these sorts of issues. But because I'm trying to print this in this manner, it's, uh, it's kind of tipped up. Uh, it puts a lot of, it puts a weird stress, a weird bending stress on the very tip, so it tends, it's looking like it's separating from the uh, build plate. So we're gonna go through today some of the things you can do to solve not only this problem, but all of the other little calibration steps that you probably should take before you build something this big. I should have listened to myself more. So. As you can see behind me, the print has changed on the CR10. Um, that's because what was on there failed horribly. Um, not really due to the printer's fault, although obviously you can see with the amount of stringing going on here, that uh, wasn't a good print going. But uh, actually I loaded the print uh, material wrong. Um, there's a, you hit there's a way to load printer material in the middle of a print and uh, I did it wrong because I'm used to a, the Ray 3D which is completely different. So uh, yeah, I screwed that up. But for this other design, it looks like we have a pretty decent design going on here. So that's kind of cool. Um, Anyway, we changed the print up here because uh, we've actually found um, maybe some of our issues with this printer. And how we did that is we actually went and grabbed uh, one of uh, the general calibration models that are you can find online. This is one of my favorites. It's a uh, it's the 3D printer test mini, um, and it's uh, you can find it on uh, Thingiverse, I believe. You can get it for free. Uh, I'll put the links in the description down below the guy who actually made it. I didn't create this model, um, but it's a really good way to test a lot of different parts of your printer. And uh, we actually ran this print on this thing back here, that's in white. And in our very fast setting on our Raise 3D uh, in there today. And uh, found some interesting things actually. For comparison, here's these two together and I'll throw some B-roll over this. The Raise 3D, despite being a larger uh, layer size, it's printing at 0.25 millimeter layers as opposed to the 0.2 millimeter layers that are printing on the uh, CR10. Uh, despite its larger printer size, it kept up uh, quality and uh, print line, at least with this CR10 out of the box, um, and also showed basically none of the problems uh, that the CR10 showed. Uh, if you're looking at this thing in the, uh, a lot of the the weird textures on this are actually uh, lettering that uh, I haven't really set up my printers to do very well, but I'm not really concerned about lettering, um, at least for this so far. But if I wanted to, um, the I could definitely set these up to do the lettering just fine. Um, but if we're looking at the, uh, Reality settings here. So we're looking at this thing, and what we see is that uh, the most of the hole tests um, are fine. Uh, the bridging test is actually pretty good, and the support test, support material test, shows just perfect. Um, however, as expected, the bridging test fails pretty good. Um, 
as well as other parts of the model that uh, aren't part of the bridging test. Those also those are part of the uh, uh, stringing test, sorry. Um, and those also failed uh, for stringing as well. Um, interesting enough though, up until about the 70 degree range, the, Ray, the CR-10 held up its uh, overhangs uh, particularly well, um, especially on the very tall long one, which I found very cool, um, if uh, a little perplexing. Maybe it has something to do with the layer height difference because I would expect the Ray's 3D to be able to perform at least as well as the CR-10 out of the box. I'll admit I have done no uh, adjustments or calibrations on the Ray's 3D since I bought it. So there's probably a little bit of room to calibrate that thing as well. But this gives us a place to start looking. Um, based on the condition of this model and the condition of some of the areas, especially the diameter test um, and the stringing test, as well as the surface condition, um, it looks like we have a couple extra things to go look at past our bed adhesion problems. So what's on the printer behind me is actually some models of my own design, and it's a uh, stringing test, for lack of a better term. It's a series of cubes. Uh, I think they're half inch um, by one inch tall, and they're set up at specified distances from each other. And it's actually designed to fit on a four by four print bed, which is why they're so small. Um, and so what I can do in my slicer and what I did here is I put one, two, three, four, five different versions of that. And in the slicer, I set each one for slightly different variation versions, variating, ver but slightly different variations on a version to help with stringing. There's a bunch of settings you can mess with to attempt to uh, deal with stringing, at least getting it down to a manageable amount or what would be an acceptable amount. Almost every slicer, in fact, every, every slicer out there should be able to manage temperatures. Uh, and basically the idea is if you're using temperature to manage stringing, uh, the lower temperature, the less fluid a, uh, a material is. And if it's less fluid, it won't ooze out of the nozzle as much when it's transitioning between pieces, which is what stringing is. So that's why these tests are, well, I broke one. Um, that's why the tests are a little like stand-up pieces and then it transitions between them. But printing too cold can cause some issues with uh, layer adhesion, um, with bed adhesion, as we saw in the last video. Uh, and uh, you have to modify your print speeds and you're going to end up printing slower. Uh, and essentially that'll up your print times um, just to handle uh, stringing. So what I prefer to do, and, and Idea Maker, which is Raise 3D's uh, program, but Simplify 3D, Cura, um, all of the free, like relatively, relatively well-known uh, slicers have the ability to do uh, retraction, um, which is essentially uh, the extruder that drives the filament into your hot end, into your hot glue gun, uh, actually pulls the filament out a little bit. It takes the pressure off of the uh, molten plastic on the inside of the extruder, and then the head transitions, and then it puts pressure back on for starting the next layer. Um, this helps in a couple ways. So essentially, what stringing is, is uh, hot plastic oozing out of your hot end as you move it. So if you take the pressure off, there's less pressure to force hot plastic out, which means that uh, you're gonna have less hot plastic oozing out. Um, and this is done in a couple ways. There's a couple different parameters. Uh, there's retraction distance or retraction amount, and that's measured in millimeters. Uh, for stuff like this, which is a Bowden tube type extruder or um, similar things like that, your retraction amounts are probably somewhere in the uh, two to four, one to three millimeter distances. Um, and retraction speed, which is how fast it pulls the filament back up in. And those are typically in, um, on a Bowden type setup, uh, you know, 30 to 50-ish. Um, 
And those will change if you have a direct drive extruder like it's on my Raise 3D, but my Raise 3D doesn't really have a stringing problem most of the time. And the other thing you can mess with to adjust your uh, stringing is something is your essentially your travel speed um, in Simplify or not Simplify 3D in uh, Idea Maker. It's called XY Travel Speed, um, and it's essentially uh, how fast your print head moves between printing locations. So in this in this design it's how fast it moves between like say this little piece and this little piece and this little piece and so the speed can actually cause in the same way you might jerk a little piece of string that's loose on your sleeve in order to break it off at the uh, at the shirt um, the same thing applies here if uh, if you move real fast while it's still attached it'll actually break that connection with the print and as it's moving it'll have less time for stuff to ooze out of the print head and you can get less stringing um, so what i've done here is i've done five sequences of various levels of uh, retraction speed retraction distance um, xy travel and a combination thereof uh, is the last one i've basically turned everything up to 11 to see what happens there uh, and uh, we're gonna let this thing run and see if we can't solve our stringing issues. Well, all right, looks like our test printing is done here. We have our five test prints and you, if we get down in close, you can see stringing is present on some, but not all of them, and we'll walk through. So this is our first print. This is, no, no this is hard through the viewfinder. This one is our first print. So this is the settings that I've been printing on so far. You can see there's a lot of, see all that, there's a lot of stringing here. Um, and in fact, funny thing, there's actually stringing where the head transfers between parts. And I think that's because uh, of the way I set up the, uh, I think that's the way the way I set up the print because I'm only changing parameters on each model when it's running between the models it's not printing on a model and so it goes back to the standard parameters which were this one so that's why if you see up here there's uh, stringing between all these parts that's because of the way the printer set, sets up the slicer so this first one here bad second one here. Uh, in this one, we took our uh, XY travel speed, so this thing moving this way and the print bed moving this way. Uh, we took that from 150 millimeters per second to 250 millimeters per second. And I mean, maybe a little bit better, but essentially no difference. So that didn't seem to work for this printer. This one test three or group three uh, in our slicer, we had everything was the same here, except instead of uh, moving uh, the XY speed, we left the XY speed at 150 and we changed the retraction speed up here. So when this motor shows filament back up to take the pressure off in the extruder, that speed was changed from 40 millimeters per second to 50 millimeters per second. And as you can see, Still quite a bit of stringing. Not really acceptable in my opinion. This fourth item is actually where we come into the stuff that looks really good. So this one was number four. And in this one we left everything the same as our stock front one and st except instead of um, a retraction of two millimeters, we actually specified a retraction of three millimeters. And you can see, put my finger in front of here, no stringing anywhere between this model. So that seems to have worked perfectly, which is nice. And this fifth one was actually a combination of all these things. So it had an increased XY travel of 200, an increased retraction speed of 50, and an increased retraction amount of three. And you can see that it looks pretty much exactly the same, except as I, and actually as I'm looking at this thing closer, 
um, they do look essentially identical in their function, which is kind of interesting because it says that the only thing that this printer seemed to need was a little bit more retraction and that throwing all those things that should make it better um, at the printer really only changed something when the retraction was added because all these are still junk and this is not any better than this. So uh, it just goes to show you that you don't necessarily have to throw every fix of the book at a problem to fix it. Sometimes just going one, two, three and only messing with the one parameter that makes sense uh, can keep things nice and easy for you in the future because now we don't have to worry about the retraction speed or retraction distance, or the retraction speed or the XY speed screwing us in some other way. So it looks like we're going to settle on this parameter set, which is a XY travel of 150, a retraction speed of 40 millimeters per second, and a retraction distance of 3 millimeters. So that's going to be our new standard, and that should solve a lot of our stringing problems. And I can't be bothered to put this thing back on the uh, tripod mount or my gorilla pod mount or anything so we're gonna do this full hand cam style for the end here but uh that's kind of it we've we've at least mostly solved our stringing issue on our new cr10 over here so yeah if you want to do this on your home printer and go from this stringy mess to this not so stringy mess um, look at and enable your retraction settings and look at your retraction speed, retraction distance, and your XY speed because one or both or all three of those, both, um, will, uh, will probably solve your problem. I think we're going to be folding the CR10 stuff uh, back in here. We're going to start working on this area some more and, and that's about it. So I think we have a workable series of parameters right now. Uh, we're not overly under extruding or over extruding right now so we're going to leave that alone. Although I might show you guys how to fix that anyway when I do some of the setup. But fantasy football is notifying me. Uh, I think that's it for this video. So thanks for watching, guys. My name is Andrew. If you like this video, hit like down below. Uh, if you have comments, questions, concerns, if you want to know how I set up multiple groups for models and things in uh, Idea Maker is what my thing is called, uh, Slicer, then ask me the questions, comments down below. Uh, if you like what we're doing in this channel, that's uh, 3D printing, garage stuff, as well as motorsports, cars, motorcycles, race cars, all the stuff that goes fast and makes loud noises, and maybe doesn't make any noises at all, um, then check out the rest of our videos, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.